Hey guys, how are you? So this is Matthew wanting to check in with you one more time at the end of this week and to also give you a look back at our last Fusion service. And I want to do that for two reasons. Number one, there may be many of you that did not get to connect to our Fusion service this last Wednesday. I want you to know that we miss you. I want you to know that you've been missed. But I also want to give you opportunities to still try to connect to what God is still doing in and around Bologna Student Ministries. And I pray that even though while you might not get to physically come in person for various reasons, maybe even due to COVID, that you can still rejoice and celebrate what God has in store for us here at First Baptist Church. But the second reason is really an accountability reason. As a former teacher, I know uh, the, the reason that we should have accountability. So for those of you uh, in your family, for those of you especially as parents, I want you to know that every time you send your students one of our services, I want you to be assured and rest assured that they are hearing the very word of God taught and preached in such a way as to transform their life through the gospel. And so we started with our very first fusion service of the school year for this school year. And what a fusion it was. This was a fusion of many firsts. Uh, so many students was the very first time in our student center. Some of our adults were here for the very first time. Uh, many of our students, well, this was the first service that they had been to in several months. All these firsts rolled into one. So things were a little bit wild at the beginning, trying to get students checked in, trying to get people seated, trying to serve food and all those things. We were a little bit wild in our game time and had an awesome time with some of our students led that activity. But I tell you what was such a wonderful part of our service. It was gathering together to worship the Lord, having our students lead us in worship, proclaiming the name of Jesus, celebrating what he's done for us on the cross. And of course, it was my passion at the end of that service to stand up on this stage and to bring a message from the word of the Lord. And what I want to do is just give a, a very quick recap of some of the things that we looked at in last fusion. Our focus on this last fusion was on the cross. The cross has to be the number one thing that we go back to, especially in this year of 2020. The cross is what centers our attention as a Christian community. And so we wanted to look at the cross in three ways, not just the message of the cross, but to also start a new series of what I call Credo in looking at the Apostles' Creed. And of course, for me, the best moment of the whole night was an ending tonight with the Lord's Supper. But we began by looking at the message of the cross, and we went to the book of Galatians. We said the book of Galatians is all about the message of the cross. Paul is writing a letter to a group of Christians that may not realize it, but they are going against the message of salvation. They're going against the true gospel of Jesus, of what he did for us on the cross. False teachers were coming into that community and teaching these Christians that they had to somehow add to what Jesus accomplished for sinners on the cross. And so we just did a very uh, brief survey of that book and we worked our way to Galatians chapter 6 where Paul ends this whole letter talking about boasting. In fact, we said last night that Paul provides here a pattern of boasting beginning in verse 11. And Paul gives us two different patterns when it comes to boasting. The very first one is that the cross is rejected because it goes against our pride. People in Paul's day 2,000 years ago rejected the cross because it was a matter of pride. They refused to submit. They refused to suffer for the truth. They wanted to boast about their own influence. And the same thing is true even today. We struggle and we reject the message of the cross, our need for salvation, because it goes against our pride. But as he wraps up in that part of the chapter, as we move a little bit later in that chapter 6, Paul ends up saying these words. He says, God forbid, far be it from me that I should boast in anything except the cross of Jesus Christ. So you'll notice there in that passage that Paul does want the Christian to boast, but to not boast in himself, but let the cross be the only source of his pride. And so with that focus on the cross, we then moved in fusion to this idea of creed. Creed is a set of beliefs. It's a proclamation of beliefs. And beliefs for the Christian are not tied on imagination or feelings or emotions, not even necessarily on what we want to be true. For Christians, our beliefs have to be based on the truths of scriptures, ultimately revealed for us by what Jesus did for us on the cross, by what God's word has said to us. And so I just introduced what's going to be the new study for us this school year in looking at the Apostles' Creed. It is a set of beliefs, not necessarily written by the apostles, but that summarize the true historical message of Christianity that goes all the way back to Jesus and what he asked his first disciples to teach. We're told in the Great Commission not just to go and make disciples and not just to baptize them, but to teach them in all the things that God had commanded. In the book of Acts, we see that the early church grew because they were united according to the apostles' doctrine. 
In the book of Jude, in Jude 3, the writer says that he wants us to contend for the faith that has been given to all the saints so that there is a faith. There's a core series, a set of beliefs that the Christian cannot compromise on. There is an agenda, a certain fundamental belief system that we have to have to truly be a Christian. And what we see throughout history is a set of statements called the Apostle Creed that proves just that. And through the Apostles' Creed, there's some reasons why we should care about it. And I shared these with the students and I want to put them here in the video. When we talk about a creed, we're not just talking about history lessons. We're not just talking about filling ourselves with knowledge. We're talking about things that should apply to our daily life and should wake us up to the truths of Scripture. So number one, we said that creeds define necessary truth. And truth is necessary to set us free. Because of our sin, we're slaves to sin, but truth has set us free. That's why we care about creeds. Number two, creeds correct error. And we should care about error because error has eternal consequences. The worst thing that I could ever possibly do is to let your student and your family fall into error and me just stay in the, on the sidelines and not care at all. But error has consequences. We said that creeds provide a standard that cannot change. There's a standard of discipleship that has not changed in the church and we cannot move from it. Creeds inform our worship and worship should bring us together. Creeds connect us to the past and models for us to follow all throughout church history. Creeds contain in writing what we should be talking about in our speech. The creed, especially the Apostles' Creed, shows us the type of conversations we need to have that are surrounded primarily on the gospel, on who God is, on who we are as sinners, and how we must respond to Him with our need for a Savior. And we ended this section with number seven that say that creeds bring a unity and this unity anticipates heaven. It's this unity that's to strengthen the church. Our students and our families are being pulled in a variety of directions, but our calling is to day by day take up our cross and follow Jesus. Out of all the struggles and pressures and anxieties that are burdening you as a student and as a family, all the different ropes that we can imagine that are pulling on us away from the cross, the ultimate fight is in whether or not we surrender to the message of Jesus, whether or not we submit our will to Him and let Him rule and reign over our lives. For when we take up our cross, what God does is He leads us to those issues, He leads us to those struggles, and He closes the gap between them and the message of Jesus. And so we talked about the cross, we talked about the creed, and we ended with by far the best moment of the night with communion, with taking the Lord's Supper. It was a wonderful privilege for me to have a room full of students and adults listening to the truths of the gospel and how it is represented for us in the breaking of bread and the drinking of the cup. We talked about how we cannot approach the Lord's table in an unworthy manner, that we have to check our heart. Number one, that we have to make sure that we are saved. We can't remember Christ and celebrate His death if we're still living in rejection of Him. But we also ended the night by just asking if there were things in our lives that we are not confessing to the Lord. If there is broken fellowship between us and God because we're living a life apart from His holiness, apart from who He has called us to be. And as we ended that night of taking of the Lord's Supper, of going back to how Jesus talked about His body broken for us, His blood spilled out for us for forgiveness on the cross, we ended with the song, Man of Sorrows and celebrated not just the death of Christ, but also His resurrection. For as Paul says in 1 Corinthians, every time we eat of the bread and take of the cup, we are proclaiming the Lord's death until He comes. So we had an awesome night. We had an awesome fusion, and there's going to be more to come. Every first Wednesday of the month, we plan to have fusion in the Student Center and have a wonderful time of worship and activities, but a wonderful time of hearing the message of God as we go through the Apostles' Creed. But as we get ready for that next month, starting next week, we're going to have our level groups, what we call our small groups. This is going to be a very simple time. This is going to be a very casual time compared to fusion. This is all about building relationships, about seeking people out where they are, and ultimately seeking out the truth so that we can focus on Jesus. So I invite you to send your student to come this next Wednesday night to our student center so that we can get to know them on a more personal way and elevate them to a closer walk in life with Jesus. I thank you so much for your time. Thank you for letting me have a quick look back over Fusion. Can't wait to do some of these more videos in the past as we celebrate what God is doing in and around Bologna Student Ministries as we seek, as always, to make disciples who make disciples through gospel transformation. God bless. Have an awesome weekend, and we'll see you again soon.